What it do, you two? It's Theo Ross, back with another motherfucking video. Hey, Theo! Scrolling Reddit again today, and I just seen this post. I read the headline, bro, and that shit's crazy. It says, I, 50 year old male, just learned my spouse, 47 female, was unfaithful years ago in marriage. She came clean from guilt. Where do I go from here? Uh, f boy, this is gonna be a long one. Buddy used, like, his, like, actual account. Because he said he wanted to be genuine, but I'm not going to put that shit. Anyways, he says, I tied the knot shortly after high school. And let's just say, if my marriage were a uh, college... Coll Boy, I cannot read. If my marriage were a collegiate course, it would be Fuck Up 101. It was a master class in what not to do. Featuring every red flag in the book. I was fresh-faced and barely off on my life journey. Figured I'd hit the jackpot. I'd assume I'd accomplish what my parents did. That being the poster couple for marital bliss. I was so naive, almost having the benefit of the doubt. Meanwhile, my then wife, fresh from escaping her parental fortress of solitude, went batshit crazy, deciding that leaving, living life to the fullest didn't include me in the picture. Ouch, that fucking hurts. It's always nasty. I mean, breakups are nasty in general, bro, but when they just set your ass aside like that, like you don't mean shit, you know what I'm saying? He says, before I knew it, I was Mr. Mom with our toddler while she was trapped underneath a few individuals. Oh, making up for lost time after finally catching her in the act, I filed for divorce and braced for impact. Divorcing in 97 in the heart of the Bible Belt was not favorable towards the husband back then. That's so fucking stupid too, bro. Like, homie, she fucked the whole football team. Can I can I get a divorce, please? What followed was straight out of a horror movie. I paid my attorney $5,000 back in 97, goddamn, to watch her take everything from my guitars and video games. She ever claimed, keep, she even claimed keepsakes from departed relative. And the judge seemed happy to grant her every wish. Not only did I bid farewell to everything I own, but my time with my son got slashed to a mere Wednesday afternoon and alternating weekends. My faith in women was broken. I went on a few dates here and there, but mostly kept it to casual encounters and dinners. I never let anyone get too close, but in early 1999, I met a woman whose marriage had crashed harder than mine. She had a stillbirth six months into her pregnancy, and her husband... It said her husband dared to bring the girlfriend to the funeral. Ooh, boy, I was thinking like, bro, bitches is cold, but motherfuckers, dudes is cold too. Holy <laughs> shit. She was heartbreaking to say the least. To learn about her husband's affair and the end of her marriage on the day they laid her daughter to rest. We sat on a couch that night, swapping tales of romantic ruin. She was clever and to me, that was an instant connection. It's rare for me to find someone who makes me laugh instead of vice versa. As I headed home, I couldn't shake her from my thoughts, kicking myself for not asking for a number. So this is like two years after your divorce. So, I mean, you know, he's back out there talking to folks. Nothing wrong with that. He says, the next day my phone rang and it was her. She had gotten my phone number from someone we both knew and asked, would you like to get some food sometime? I said, now sounds great. Kind of weird. I ain't gonna lie to you. So I drove to her grandmother's house and off we went on what turned out to be what I still consider the perfect date. Now I get it. We were both lonely and had our hearts broken. But trust me, this was no spark. It was an inferno. Ugh. He says, and believe it or not, we had been inseparable since that day. We have not spent a night apart. That was 25 years ago, with us marrying a year after our meeting. Go ahead and facepalm. I know how it sounds, but it's hard to put the connection between us into words. Even I'm still shaking my head in disbelief. That sounds like a pretty normal way for people to meet each other, what? Families adored the two of us together. I was certain I had found my soulmate, if you believe in that. And I was certain she felt the same. We enjoyed each other's company, and our lives mesh perfectly. As with life, however, it finds those moments of bliss 
to take a giant shit on you. In 2006, I began feeling ill. Eating resulted in violent illness, which I initially thought was a virus. But after a week with no improvement, it was clear this was something else. I was admitted to the local hospital and underwent numerous tests. When I was first admitted, I weighed 222 pounds at a height of 6'2". Within a year, I had dropped 146. God damn! He had dropped to 146 pounds. My condition dumbfounded the doctors. My health was deteriorating. Deteriorating. My health was deteriorating. Throughout the ordeal, she never left my side. Her hand in mine, begging me not to leave her. In late 2007, a last ditch effort sent me to Cleveland Clinic where a young doctor rushed me into surgery. When I awoke three hours later, she was there, hand in mine with a smile. It was a success, I was cured. While I'll spare you the details, it involved my colon. Finally, I could eat and move without agony. My life resumed and we were happy again. The following year, she received a lucrative job offered in her field, earning more than I did. That didn't bother me at all. She worked hard and she earned it. He says, after her miscarriage, my wife was unable to conceive. We had been trying since 2000 and eventually came to terms with the fact that it might not happen. In 2010, we got a call from the state of Minnesota about a two-year-old girl who had been taken from her mother due to drug-related charges. They asked if we would consider adopting her because my because the mother had requested she be placed with a with family members before her parental rights were terminated. My wife and I drove 30 hours to meet her, and after a few months, we adopted her and welcomed her into our home. Yo, I'm sorry I can't fucking read. So that's good, you know, 10 years married, y'all got a kid, and you know, even better, you adopted. Shit, ain't nothing wrong with that. Our daughter faced social challenges and had endured abuse, leading the two of us to decide one of us needed to be at home with the as mentioned, my wife earned significantly more, so it made sense for me to be the one to step into that role. I dedicated each day to supporting our daughter's mental health. While I played a part, I can't claim all the credit for this. Her preschool, kindergarten, and therapist were instrumental in her, learn in her learning to socialize and trust again. Eventually, I took up freelance journalism, so I was home when our little one finished her school day. Yo, that's, that's dope, bro. Like, you sound cool too, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? He's not like, oh, I, I fucking took care of her by myself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can tell your motherfucking ass a journalist, bro. These big ass words. Our evenings were family time, and we took small trips on the weekends. It was in 20, 2017 that my wife returned from work one evening, deeply shaken by what she told me was a workplace argument. Despite my attempts to console her, she remained in, like, what the hell kind of word is that? She was declaring her intent to find a new job. She'd never had any issues before, so I was stunned. For days, she was a mess and withdrawn. When I pressed for details, she say, it would only upset you, let me deal with it. True to her word, she left for a new company within a week, accepting a 15% reduction in pay. I should have questioned it then, but she never gave me cause for concern. Once she began her new role, life returned to normal and our family happily moved forward. In 2022, I published my first novel with an independent publisher, fulfilling a lifelong dream. I could sense the pride in imminent, imminent, Bro, I'm editing this video. I know how to say emanating. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what my brain was reading right there, but I know how to say emanating. From both my wife and daughter, I had achieved this milestone before my 50th birthday, and I couldn't wait to start on my second one. Damn, this is two years ago, bruh. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is where my world breaks. In 2023, as I was finishing up my new novel, my 27-year-old son from my first marriage died suddenly of a heart attack. God damn. He had an underlying condition that none of us knew about. I want everyone to understand that when I say I couldn't imagine my child dying, you truly can't. There is no pain quite like it. My wife and daughter, who also felt his loss deeply, did their best to support me. But there is no way to deal with such a tragedy. In the months following his death, I immersed myself in my work, striving to complete my second book form. I bet that book good as fuck, boy. Oh, God, that's so fucking sad, bruh. On the day I finished it in January, 
My father passed away after a long battle. Oh, he says dad had been ill for a long time. Bro, I'm about to cry. You think you can prepare yourself for that, but that's a lie you tell yourself. The loss was hard, and my daughter was instrumental in getting me back on my feet. My second book was released in February, and I tried to smile as I had my release party. At the beginning of April, I started feeling better, writing outlines for my third novel and doing the same things I had always done with my wife and daughter. My wife and I have a Wednesday tradition where she picks a random recipe she finds online, and we cook it together. On April 3rd, while making crock-pot chicken tacos that sounds fucking fire first of all i thanked her for everything she asked why and i thanked her for everything she had done to get me through tough times i shared a lot of pent-up emotions telling her i couldn't have managed without her she started crying then weeping and soon she was sobbing uncontrollably i tried to comfort her with a hug but she pushed me away I apologize not realizing my words would stir such a reaction. That's got to be a little fucking strange, bro. You're like sitting there like, bro, thank you for being such a good fucking person, bro. And then they just sitting there like, yep, mm-hmm, yep. Suddenly, she confesses her infidelity. I laughed, mistaking it for a joke. She grabs my shoulders and then details how back in 2017, a 28-year-old at her former job started flirting with her and she reciprocated she believed it was innocent yet it persisted my wife has always feared growing old her birthdays were days she dreaded every year she admitted that the attention from a younger man was exhilarating she told me that turning 40 had sent her into a tailspin and that she couldn't talk to me about it because i would have shrugged it off bitch Fuck you. I'm kidding, go. Yeah. He invited her to leave work early and come to his place one day. She couldn't understand why she chose to. Maybe it was a thrill. She said she didn't know, but she went and ended up sleeping with him. Afterward, she felt terrible. I bet she did post nut clarity, stupid hoe. Glaring at her keychain in his driveway because it had a photo of me holding our dog. Fuck off, bruh. Fuck off! Oh, you was? You was looking at the fucking keychain after you just got fucked by this motherfucker? Fuck off! She drove home, and that's when she lied about having a workplace argument. She never wanted to return there. It's why she suddenly went somewhere. Yeah, bruh, I figured. She told me that she wanted to tell me, but didn't have the fortitude to do it. Nasty ass, stupid ass. I remained silent, just wide eye and open mouth. Probably fucking shocked, bro. Like, this motherfucker, Jesus Christ, bro. Like, I just want to give this motherfucker, like, a hug, dude. Imagine your first wife do this shit. Your dad die. Your motherfucking son die. And then your second wife do this? She apologized, saying she couldn't live with it any longer. I just shook my head. He shrugged it off. <laughs> Unable to speak a single word. She offered to leave if that's what I wanted. To attend counseling or even beg for my forgiveness. Instead, I picked up my AirPods and phone and walked out. I wandered from six in the evening until almost 11 that night. When I returned, she was on the love seat asking if I was ready to talk. Bitch, shut the fuck up. I shook my head again. No. Went to my office where I had my couch and slept there. Next day, after our daughter left for school, she asked if I had anything to say. I said yes. I question why she brought this up after the worst year of my life. Why wouldn't she have kept it to herself until I could somewhat deal with something of this magnitude? Yo, he's being real with her, bro. Like, most of y'all being like, oh, you should have just told me the truth. But, like, bro, he is literally at the lowest of lows, bro. She just looked away. I scoffed and told her to go to work and to try not to fuck anyone down. <laughs> Hey, homie, man. He mad, bro. I can't even blame him. Yeah, bro. She didn't fucking tell you, bro, because it's the right thing to do. No, she felt guilty, bro. She told you for another selfish-ass reason, bro. If she would have never felt guilty, guess what? She would. You would have never found out. That would have been April 4th. Those were the last words I said to her until last night. She had attempted to talk to me several times, but I would just walk past her into my office trying to focus on my upcoming science fiction comedy book. Sounds fucking dope. 
Writing something funny is challenging, and when the thought of your spouse rolling around with another man stuck in her, stuck in her, consumes your thought. Oh, <laughs> why, do you, why do you say it like that, bro? A week ago, my daughter asked in the car if everything was okay, and I lied to her, which made me feel sick. Then last night, my wife came into the office door and asked, are we getting a divorce? I looked at her and replied, looks like it. She started crying and closed the door. Please tell me you don't chase after this bitch. I haven't consulted an attorney and the thought of a divorce hadn't crossed my mind. <laughs> hadn't crossed my mind until she had mentioned it. It didn't. It really fucking didn't, bruh. That's why I wrote this essay. Where do I go from here? Where do I start to untangle this mess? I have no desire for therapy. I don't even want to step outside. I'm broken at this moment. The burden of everything has been overwhelming. There's been so much to bear this past year. What do you say to someone who has been by your side through it all only to tear your heart apart? And then he just thanks for reading and I think that's it. Alright buddy, here's what the fuck you do. And I know you can't see this clearly because you heartbroken. But I'm gonna spell it out for you and I'm gonna spell it out for any motherfucker in this situation. Bitches like this is not trying to do the right thing, okay? She may act like it, you know what I'm saying? She may <laughs> smile and wave and high and, you know, cry. Oh, I didn't, I didn't mean to. Ah, whatever. Fuck you, bruh. Y'all was married for 17 years? And then what? It took her ass another seven to fucking tell you, bruh? Buddy, what the fuck else you think she kept from your ass? What you do, bruh, is you get rid of that hoe. Love your daughter as hard as you motherfucking can. And put all that pain... All that emotion, all that sorrow into those books. And buddy, you need to go to some therapy, bro. Like, cause you you ain't got no confidence just reading throughout this whole thing. Like, you may like pick yourself back up. And I get life has has fucking hit your ass with a baseball bat, bro. But dude, you need you need some confidence, bro. Cause like you talk about like her making more money than you, and you know you try and do your part, and you like underplay like. Shit that you do for the motherfuckers, bruh. I don't know, bruh. I don't know if you can fix this. That's, I, don't, I hate to just be like, that's it. You know what I'm saying? But, like, how do you look at that bitch the same again? You said you can't even you can't even type your books without thinking about that shit in the back of your mind, bruh. I don't blame you. Nah, you need to come clean. You need to sit your daughter down. Don't talk bad about her mother. That's still her mom. You know what I'm saying? Adopted or not, that's still her mom. And y'all need to figure out a healthy way that y'all all can progress in life. Because fuck that shit, bruh. I get not wanting to feel old, but if you gotta fuck 28-year-olds... Oh, God bless you, buddy. Anyways, man, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Let me know what you think buddy should do. Should he, uh, you know, cut his losses? Should he try and make shit work? <laughs> Anyways, y'all be sure to like, comment, subscribe. It's been Theo.